a mystery interstellar object that was spotted by astronomers last week. It could be the oldest comet ever seen. Something is moving through our solar system that does not behave like it belongs here. Astronomers logged it as a routine faint smudge, a forgettable wanderer from deep space. Then it brightened, dimmed and brightened again, snapping between states like a cosmic light switch. The object now known as 3I Atlas refuses to follow the rules we teach first-year astronomy students. Comets are supposed to warm up slowly, shed a gentle haze of gas and dust, and trace out a predictable glow. This thing surges, it goes quiet, it flares, it acts like it's on its own schedule. That was the first clue. The second, its colors. Natural comets transition with distance, chemistry driven by heat and sunlight, but 3i Atlas flips palette like a mood ring, switching bands far too quickly at the wrong places in the sky, as if it's responding to cues we can't see. Imagine watching a campfire that suddenly burns cold blue, then warm green, then back again, without any change in the wood or the wind. That's the level of wrong we're talking about. And then came the part that made professionals put down their coffee. Comet tails are the solar system's windsocks. They always stream away from the sun, pushed by radiation and the solar wind. Everyone learns this on day one. Yet images of three IATLAS show a persistent, sharply defined structure that seems to point toward the sun. A forward-facing lance of light, not a backward-blown veil. If you've ever seen water flow uphill, you know how it feels to look at this data. The immediate conservative explanation was debris. Perhaps large, reflective fragments breaking free and drifting ahead of the nucleus. Possible if those fragments were heavy enough, coherent enough, and arranged just so to maintain a tight, focused line for vast distances while resisting the gale of solar particles screaming past them possible in the way that a coin can stand on its edge during an earthquake. Not strictly forbidden by physics, but certainly not what you'd bet on. Chemistry didn't calm anybody down. Spectra, the fingerprints of light, came back odd. Less of the familiar water ice signature. More carbon species, uncomfortable traces that don't match the classic dirty snowball picture. It's as if someone mixed the recipe backwards and still expected the cake to rise. Natural, maybe. But if it's natural, it's a variety we haven't catalogued, forged under conditions we don't understand, in a place we've never seen. And the path? The path is the loudest whisper of all. Interstellar objects usually arrive at peculiar angles, harried by eons of random tugs. 3i Atlas shows a trajectory that rides the flat plain where our planets live, as though it studied the lanes before merging into traffic. It threads past worlds with suspicious grace, close enough for cameras and instruments to get a look, far enough to avoid unnecessary drama. No skimming earth, no hair-raising near misses, just precise choices, like waypoints on a plotted route, if you want to make people nervous, you don't need lasers or explosions. You just need to act like you know where you're going. That's why the what if started. What if the brightness bursts aren't random outgassing, but staged events, releases, deployments, tests? What if the forward pointing structure isn't a tail at all, but a directed phenomenon? Propulsion, communication, sensing, what if the chemistry problem isn't a problem? Just the signature of engineered materials no one expected to see in the wild? Most scientists won't touch those questions with a 10-meter pole. A few will, quietly. Not because they're chasing headlines, but because the data keeps shoving them toward a place they don't want to go. If an object consistently breaks your models, the honest move is to check the models, not scold the cosmos. There's a narrow window to do more than guess. As 3i Atlas cuts through the inner system, multiple observatories on the ground, in orbit, and circling other worlds are lining up the shot of a lifetime. From certain vantage points, the geometry turns perfect. Backlighting to reveal structure, 
angles that separate a true beam from a trick of perspective, spectra that can tell reflected sunlight from generated light. If any spacecraft near its path can catch a crisp series of frames, we'll get the kind of evidence that silences arguments. The shape of the nucleus, the texture of the coma, the behavior of that forward feature as the sun angle changes. A single clean sequence could answer questions that thousands of words cannot. When an engine would be hungriest, the object slides behind the sun from Earth's point of view. Our sensors go snow blind, the sky turns into a wall of light. If you were planning a stealthy maneuver, you couldn't pick a better curtain. Maybe that's chance, the universe runs on coincidences. But after the third or fourth tidy coincidence, people stop calling them that. So what are we looking at? Scenario 1. Nature got weird. 3i Atlas is a rare interstellar fragment with unfamiliar chemistry and fortuitous geometry. Its behavior, colors, flashes, forward structure, can be explained by large reflective debris, sublimation pockets, and sunlight playing tricks down a narrow corridor. If so, great. We'll catalog a new class and rewrite some footnotes. Scenario 2. Nature got weirder. Unknown physics at cometary surfaces. Exotic ices that don't survive long near stars. Electrostatic effects in the solar wind shaping light in ways we haven't modeled. This is the most comfortable strange answer. No intentions, just phenomena. Scenario 3. It's not solely natural. The object is carrying hardware. Maybe it's ancient wreckage that still does something when heated. Maybe it's a dormant shell that wakes in sunlight. Maybe it's exactly what our craft look like to someone else's telescopes. A rock-shaped bus that drops instruments as it cruises past targets of interest. Mars would be an obvious target. Dusty, dry, rich with history, crawling with our machines. If you wanted to study a civilization without announcing yourself, you'd watch what it's watching. Pick your poison. Each scenario demands a different kind of courage. Here's what isn't in dispute. This is an interstellar visitor. It is not bound to the sun the way our homegrown comets are. When it goes, it goes. Out, away, into the dark. No second pass for a better look next decade. No lazy return in a hundred years. We get one chance to learn, and then it becomes another myth swimming in the ocean between stars. There's something almost taunting about that. The universe handing you a sealed envelope and then counting backward from 10. So we do what we always do. We point every eye we have at the problem. We coordinate, we cross calibrate. We argue and publish and argue again. We pit dull explanations against dramatic ones and refuse to accept either until the numbers behave. If 3i Atlas is just a peculiar comet, the data will drag us there. If it's a message in a bottle, the data will drag us somewhere harder. And if it is a message, if those light bursts are syllables, if that forward lance is a finger pointing, then the most unsettling part is not that we're being watched, it's that the watcher already knows exactly how close to come, exactly when we can't see, exactly where our cameras are and what they can't do. We love to imagine first contact as trumpets and beams and motherships blotting out the sky, but maybe it looks like this instead. A quiet object that breaks small rules in quiet ways, leaves us arguing among ourselves and slips past before anyone can decide what it was. Whether 3i Atlas is a rebel comet, an exotic physics lesson, or a piece of technology disguised as stone, it's already done something historic. It has forced us to admit how much of our certainty is just habit. It has reminded us that the universe is under no obligation to be convenient. And it has left a question hanging that no telescope can answer alone. If a visitor can cross our doorstep without tripping a single alarm, what else has come and gone while we were busy looking the other way? Keep watching the sky, not for the bright, obvious spectacle, for the quiet things that refuse to act ordinary. Those are the ones that change what we think we know.